Hiya friends, it's Comicade, the biggest kid in comics, and this is Forgotten Comics with the Comic Collector's Guild. In this series, I cover what was and what could be in comic books. Today's episode features the strange past of Jack Ryder, the Creeper. The Creeper, not to be confused with the Scooby-Doo villain of the same name. The Creeper! Joins the team! Was created by the legendary comic book artist Steve Ditko. Doubt that I need to remind anyone that he was the co-creator of Spider-Man, along with creating such iconic characters as the Blue Beetle and the Question. My introduction to the Creeper was the same as my introduction to the Question, which was through the DC Animated Universe continuity. Batman, the animated series, more specifically, the new adventures of Batman. Or the, the, the new, yeah, the new adventures of Batman. It was the f it was the fourth season or uh, fourth it was the fourth season of Batman the animated series. I am getting a bit ahead of myself. Let's go back to where the Creeper got his start, which was much earlier in comic book history than that. Back in the pages of DC's showcase in the year 1968. The purpose of Showcase was to feature brand new or minor characters to build interest in them with their readers. The Creeper was featured in issue 73 of this comic, as his first full cover and in-comic appearance. Since then, the Creeper has had full comics all his own. In this video today, we are not going to cover everything that is the Creeper. We're not going to co uh, cover uh, every comic the Creeper has had, all the connections. To be frank, I couldn't do all the research in the time it, was, it took to make this video. So what I decided to do was just break down his origins and see where we could take it based on what I know. So let us go back and explore his origins. Jack Ryder is the Creeper, originally a reporter and who has been a reporter ever since in the DC Universe in many appearances. In his origins, he's fired from the news station because he spoke his mind in an interview where a powerful man, Dr. Clayton Wetley, or Whitley, Whitley, was debating violence. Bill Brain, was she, did Ditko come up with these names? Bill Brain, Bran, Brain, Bran. I'm gonna call him Bill Bran. Bill Brand, network security investigator, likes the cut of his jib, or at least liked the way that he spoke out against Wheatley. So he offers him a possibly lethal job, that was nice, investigating the underworld and communists who have a man named Professor Yachts in their keep and are planning to smuggle him out of the USA. Their only lead is a commie agent named Major Smeh. Bill and his friend, who is too badly beaten to speak, believe that Smeh is working with the underworld to kidnap Professor Yachts, who I already told you they now have. Jack thought it sounded like kicks, but never specified what was being kicked or who was doing the kicking. Pete, the beaten friend from earlier, was working on a lead about a party where the commies would be gathering this same night. Well, that's some job there. When can you start? Same night. <laughs> They send Jack to crash the party and do some sleuthing. They did not know, however, that it was a costume party, so Jack ran over to the costume shop, I guess nearby, which mainly had costumes for kids, but he was in luck because the shopkeeper had a box of junk and leftovers from a strangely special adult order. I, I don't even want to know or, or think about what this costume was originally. But with the ridiculous outfit on, he could now be more inconspicuous at this strange party of underworld and commie ruffians. It's weird. <laughs> Not just the costume either, the, the whole event is very weird. I guess back in the, the time this was written, that was, uh, that was an acceptable plotline, but it's kind of strange. Just a party of commies and underworld. He starts snooping, and is instantly recognized to be an outsider by party security. They chase him until he's stabbed with no visible wound, and he makes his way through a secret door, which somehow was revealed in combat. 
In this room, he knocks out a guard and then meets Professor Yatz, who tends to his wound by injecting him with an experimental serum so that the bad guys can't have it. Before this, he had only ever tested it on animals. He doesn't even specify if the animals live or die. So, yeah, that's perfectly safe. With the concoction coursing through him, he had enhanced strength and a quick healing factor that could rival the Wolverines. Not only that, but he put a device inside of his wound that when activated could instantly take him out of the goofy costume that he had put on. Convenient. Then the professor gets shot by the guard that Ryder knocked out. When the collective bad dudes try to break into the secret room, Ryder busts out and flees them with amazing strength and speed. Now the professor is dead, and his secrets are with Ryder. Only these guys don't know that. Uh, quick summary. The people start referring to him as the Creeper. He does return to these hoodlums and leaves a trail of them for local law enforcement to handle. At the end of the issue, we are giving a closing line where Jack accepts that he will be living a dual identity as the Creeper and himself from now on. These particular origins do not connect him to the Joker. That was done later in comic continuity, but I believe first done in the DC Animated Universe. I gotta say, this story wasn't horrible. It was just kinda hard to wrap one's mind around. I don't actually need to come up with a new origin or continuation of the character at all. You might consider me biased towards this continuity, but the DC Animated Universe already made us a better story for the Creeper's origins, and in respect to Steve Ditko's original creation. In the new Batman Adventures episode 23, we are given a new origin to the Creeper. Jack Ryder was the co-anchor of Summer Gleason's Gotham Insider when he did an expose on the Joker. The Joker came in and dosed Ryder and his crew with laughing gas, his laughing gas, and then he threw Ryder into the same vat of chemicals that had transformed him. The chemicals mixed with the gas to cause a mutation in Ryder, giving him yellow skin, green hair, and increased strength and agility. Additionally, it caused him to have a mentally insane personality. This, however, did not cause him to join the side of evil, but instead decide to be a hero. The Creeper in this version of the character becomes a persona of Ryder, one which Batman has graciously provided Joker toxin antidote patches for Ryder to keep the personality on a leash, so to speak. I would really love a comic series like this. Perhaps there's an instance where the personality would become too strong to control, or even an instance where he can't seem to reactivate the persona when he needs it. It could turn into a real Banner Hulk sort of comic situation. And that's pretty much all we need to base a brand new series on. Of course, I know there have been many versions of this character, um, I'm pretty sure still in the New 52 continuity, but Unfortunately, I'm not following all of that. I get, I'm giving you my opinion based on what I have, what I know, and what I've researched, and all of that gives me a place to start. So a good place to start would be creating a series with this persona as both a helping hand and a problem, because a persona like that could get out of hand. <laughs> I think that's obvious. Thank you for watching. Remember to comment, like, subscribe, do all that great stuff. And, of course, as always, keep it unreal. <laughs> oh, that was unexpected. I better slow down here. Try to figure out logically what's going on. Whoa, that hurt. Okay, we'll come back to that.